Back in the middle of 2012, a small company by the name of Sandia Labs uploaded a video showing off their aptly named Sandia Cooler. It was a site never before seen in the computer component market with a complete metal construction. This video attracted many viewers, all wanting to get a hold of one of these quote-unquote metal things. But, a couple years passed with no word from Sandia Labs. But at CES 2015, Cooler Master was showing off a couple concepts based off of the original Sandia Cooler. They each had minor cooling improvements that the initial design failed to incorporate. But now, five years later, after that original Sandia Cooler was shown off, Thermaltake has recently released a CPU cooler with the same core design in mind. But does it really work? Well, for this video, I gathered up another cooler that is currently destroying the small form factor market, the Noctua NHL9i, as well as a stock Intel heatsink as a ground. For this showdown, I will be testing the cooling performance of these CPU coolers in multiple CPU stressing situations. For the test bench, I will be using i5-3330, an ASUS PBH67 motherboard, as well as 8GB of DDR3 1333MHz RAM as well as using each company's thermal paste for their respective coolers. Starting off the testing with Cinebench R15, in the CPU test, you could see that each of these chips are capped at around the 50 degrees Celsius mark, with the stock heatsink edging slightly ahead over the Engine 27. Next, I tested the cooler's performance in W Prime, running both the 32 and 1024 tests. For both tests, the Engine 27 was maintaining second place with its decent cooling performance compared to the Intel and Noctua coolers. And for the final test, I ran Passmark 9, one of the most CPU intensive benchmarks out there. And as you can see, the Engine 27 was again bringing in last place by a couple degrees Celsius. Now for my final verdict. As shown by the average temperatures in all the tests that I ran with the three coolers, the Engine 27 was never the best performer of the three. You may look at these temperatures and see the Intel heatsink. The one that comes bundled with every non-K Intel CPU is performing better in every test and wonder why dish out the $50 to buy the Engine 27. Well, the place that this cooler excels in is extreme small form factor cooling, specifically 1U servers. With this cooler's crazy small height of only 27mm, why wouldn't you go with it over the sea of passive heat sinks? So, do I recommend this? Yes and no. For someone building in a large form factor case with lots of room, buy a cheaper cooler like the Hyper 212 Evo which is a much better bang for your buck. But if you're building in a small form factor chassis or a server chassis, I think that the Engine 27 will suit your needs perfectly. So thank you to my new friends over at Thermaltake for sending this cooler out to me for a review and thank you guys for watching the video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like down below and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching, bye.